Do you ever wonder what creates the difference between us and the MLBB eSports players? We all know how strong the current Onyx ID team is, right? And why do you think AP Brain is literally unstoppable now? Why they are able to perform better than us? All their secret strategies are exposed in this special video. Hi guys, Kazuki here and in this video we will look deep into the gameplays of the current base teams and break it down to the smallest detail possible. Before going into breaking down the gameplays of the current base teams in MLBB, let's understand what makes them so special and different from an average player in MLBB. A few moments later. The first point what creates this difference is vast in game knowledge and understanding the heroes. Every MLBB player who play at the pro stage at least have this in their arsenal. Keeping updated with even the smallest detail like how much damage a skill does make them do a calculated approach in either committing for solo engages or in team fights. They have mastered their particular set of heroes according to their roles and know them in and out. They are always updated with the changes in the game like nerf buffs or adjustments on heroes and generally this dictates their hero pools. Talking about hero pool, they have vast hero pool and most of them play almost all the heroes in the game. They may not be an expert in each and every hero but they sure know how to maximize the potential of the hero. The next point is coordinating with each other. We all love to see this perfect coordinated team fights, don't we? The only way to achieve this is with sheer practice and building the synergy with each other. It's almost like they can see a situation and decide what their teammates is going to do next. And that is just otherworldly. And how to achieve it? Only through sheer practice and determination and above all, trust in your counterpart. The next point is guidance and strategies. As we all know, all the pro players are first groomed under their respective coaches which enhances their skill sets and decision making even more. Well, all of us can't get access to the great coaches like Coach Yeb, Master the Basics and there's no way you can fill in their shoes. But there are plenty of things I can do which will be keeping you guys updated about the meta. Which heroes you should prioritize and help you with your decision making skills if you consider me your well wisher. And the last point is dedication to the game. All the players in the eSports scene have a tremendous dedication to the game. Imagine playing thousands and thousands of hours of the same game and still having the will and patience to improve themselves. Now that is what I call dedication. I am sure many of you also would have thousands of hours of gameplay under your experience too. Tell me in the comment section if it didn't help you in improving your gameplay and if it did, how it helped you out. Now that you understand what sets of eSport players apart from the normal players, let's go and break down the games of some fan favorite teams, starting with Onik ID. The Indonesian powerhouse in Mobile Legends Bang Bang has made a mark in eSports with their aggressive gameplay. Their unique style blends individual skills, strategic drafting and early game pressure for dominate performance. On the other hand, we have Blacklist International, another formidable team that stands out with a different yet equally effective style. Known for their adaptability, strategic drafting, effective team coordination and versatile hero pool. Blacklist International excels in mid to late game strategies. In this breakdown, we will dive into the key aspects of both Onik ID and Blacklist International's gameplay. Do you remember this match? The MSC Grand Finals between Onik and Blacklist International. One of the most hyped match in MLBB. Let's start with drafting phase. As you can see, we entered the drafting phase with Kaja, Franco and Karita being banned from Blacklist and Estes and Joy banned from the side of Onik ID. We all know Kaja's pick-off potential with his divine judgement and Kaja on the hands of Keyboy is just a true monster. In the next band, Diggy gets banned from the Onik side. Onik ID respecting the support heroes from Oh My Venus 
and just getting them out of his arsenal. This move was black to gate Fredrin for Wise. Onigaidi pick Valentina and Chow in the second pick. Blacklist answers with Noveria and Wanwan. Two perfect heroes as their ultimate will be useless for Valentina. And then we can see signature Fanny pick Dove from Onigaidi. Not risking it getting banned in the second phase bans. We see Akai getting banned from Onyx side and Blacklist responded with Uranus because Uranus last game gave them a trauma. Onig ID next bans Arlot to avoid NTCC in experience and Blacklist responded with Beatrix. We all know how deadly CW is with Beatrix. Onig picks Claude. Edward responded with his signature Lapu Lapu and we see Minotaur for the Queen. The last pick for Onig, we see Masha. And with this begins the final of MSC 2023. Let's see and analyze their game. Onig ID has always started the game with aggressive lane cutting and invading with the help of Masha and Chao. Blacklist already started the first turtle and we can see Kairi trying to trade it with a kill. However, one one had leg plates, so he couldn't eliminate her. This highlight of importance of recognizing opponents' item choices and adjusting strategies accordingly. Blacklist punishes Masha for overstaying while also securing the turtle land. Meanwhile, Onig ID acknowledges the challenges posed by CC heroes in the turtle area and smartly opts to trade it for kills in the gold land. Onig ID's choices here teaches an important lesson. Know when to fight for objectives and when to opt for alternative strategies, especially when the odds are against you. A reminder not to unnecessarily contest objectives in challenging situations and also master fanny. Lol. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> we can see Kairi purchasing Malefic Roar and Blade of Epitasis to deal extra penetration on that leg plate. A smart counterplay from Oni Kairi. Now, Blacklist International prioritized objectives. Onik ID strategically focused on securing kills. This approach allowed Onik ID to maintain a favorable goal difference. This demonstrates the effectiveness of diverse strategies in achieving overall success in Mobile Legends Bang Bang. This was, of course, unexpected. Even all my winners didn't anticipate Fanny's presence, resulting in 1 1 dead. But you might be wondering how. Well, if you rewind, you can see Kiboy constantly giving vision. And with good communication and proper map sense, Kairi knew 1 1 would be there. Despite Onig ID leading the game, it's crucial to acknowledge Blacklist International's effort in securing objectives. This highlights the importance of appreciating opponents, strategic plays, and contributions, promoting a well rounded perspective on the game. The game hits the 12 minute mark and examining the in-game equipment reveals two noteworthy strategies. First, Owl's 1-1 one -one opts for Wind of Nature, a defensive item to avoid getting one shot by Fanny. On the other hand, Fanny invests in penetrating item indicating a focus on dealing damage to tanky heroes. These choices showcase the player's adaptability and strategic thinking in optimizing their builds for specific in-game challenges. And in just under 40 seconds, we witnessed an incredibly swift movement. It was so quick that I bet Owl couldn't even react to it. Here we observe Onik ID effectively zoning out Blacklist International with full map control. Onik ID strategically forces Blacklist to make a decision. If Blacklist contests for the load, Boots on Masha could potentially end the game. To counter this threat, Edward wisely chooses to stay and defend, joined by UA. What a remarkable way for Onig ID to conclude the game and with the MSC 2023. In my opinion, both teams showcased exceptional gameplay and there is a lot to learn from their strategies. It's a testament to the dynamic nature of the competition, where teams continuously strive to outperform each other providing valuable insights for players and spectators alike. This match was one of those matches where we witnessed the most loved teams in the region at the particular point of time clash with each other. Onik got the better half of Blacklist in the match 
but there are many strategies we know Blacklist International gave us. The perfect Ube strategies for instance. Observing these professional teams, it's evident that there is still a lot for us to learn. If you are interested in more breakdowns, feel free to leave a comment about your favorite team. And if we hit the goal of 5k likes on this video, we will give you breakdowns of the M5 series too. So will you adopt the gameplay of pro players? Who is your current favorite player? Share your opinions down below. So that will be all for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Keep supporting Kazuki Official.